Good day, ladies and gentlemen and newcomers, and welcome to our first double feature course showcase. So today, we're trying something new on the channel. I've taken two courses from the Victory Lynn Sports Fantasy Golf Fanatic Design Contest, and the first course will be Parodia Magnifica, designed by Baby Bull, and the second course will be the Nebuchadnezzar, designed by Sir La Rossi. So we're going to have our usual flyover of the course, probably just a little bit more in depth of checking out their course and their whole plot and all the detail they put into it. And I will be choosing four holes from my playthrough that I've done and just showcasing those alone. So it is up to you as the viewer and player to go and fill in the gaps and hit the course for yourself. Now this is something new on the channel, I have been thinking about this for quite a while and it does take a little bit of time and work to do this. So I would appreciate all the feedback that I can get and yeah, just let me know what you think in total. But anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get into our first course. Okay, welcome to Parodia Magnifica and this one is designed by Baby Bull. But yes, absolutely stunning looking desert themed fantasy course. So we're just going to fly down here and just check out this in all its glory. Now he does have a list of attractions here. We do have 14 flying grandstands. So as you can see up here, the designer Baby Bull has absolutely enlarged one of these desert themed plants and turned it into some sort of flying grandstand, which absolutely looks insane. What an imagination. You got the plane up the top, that big plant, that big spiky plant that looks like a huge balloon. Yeah, that is pretty damn cool. I'm really liking this course. I actually, actually really, really enjoyed the playthrough of it. Yeah, and you got all this concrete, sort of like floating, pathway as well very very nicely done now he did message me about this course because ages ago i asked baby bull i said dude can you design a desert theme course because i think he's gonna absolutely nail it and well i think he has look at this building and the rock work the planting is absolutely 100 percent. his rock work is just phenomenal from this designer so our second um, thing on his list of attractions are two flying boats. Now it does say in brackets here, well, one is a yacht, whatever. I'm sticking with boat, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Now in his message to me, because I asked for a desert theme course, and this is the closest he has got to making one, this hole four here is a nice little par three. And in my honor, down here, he is thrown in a crackaroo. Yep, that's right. The old kangaroo. So I am quite humbled by that. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. And thank you for all these beautiful courses that you have given us to play. I am absolutely wrapped in that. There he is there. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, he's a cute little bastard. All right. Anyway, let's keep flying around. Let's rip it up a bit higher. Let's go down this way on the course. Now, the third thing on the list is one vanicopter, as he calls it. But here's one of the um, flying boats out here. It kind of, to me, it reminds me of like a steampunk kind of feel. But golf. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I like the way he's done that. He's got the boat. He's jammed a couple of planes into it. Push it along. Yeah, very nicely done. All right, so we'll just swing the camera around here and let's wander down this way. Get down a little bit closer to all this planting because it looks absolutely magnifica. No pun intended. <laughs> Couldn't help myself, sorry. All right, this, the other thing on the list, we have four van float boats. As you can see them down here in the distance, just off to our right, uh, one windmill float boat. You can also see that just off to the left of that floating grandstand down there in the distance. We have four pieces of waterfall art. And 
Also, as it says here, 17.3, the zillion floating stone steps. All these things here. Could you imagine how long it would have taken old baby bull to just raise them up, get them all level, and then bring them up like step work or like stairs, just like this, all the way up to this nice little island green. All right, so let's just keep going around the course, see what else we can see. Uh, also, we have a four and a half ish island greens. So that was one of them just behind us. There is another one just down here in front. Uh, we have three ish island tees and one ish island fairway, which I'm pretty sure is just down here a little bit further. Now, I was flying around on this earlier, and I can't f seem to find his usual how that he puts on the course. So I'm not quite sure what he's done with it. There's always one somewhere. But anyway, we shall just keep flying. So let's bring the camera down this way. So there's another island green here. There's the, um, uh, what's he call it? The windmill float boat just out there in the distance. Hopefully there's a cow not driving that because I'm not going to get too close to it. Oh, let's just bring the camera back around this way, scoot past this grandstand. Now, I do recommend that you play with the crowd on because those seats are packed out with the crowd. Now, we do have an island tee just below us here, which is very nice. But I love the building works, the buildings, sorry, that Baby Bull has gone for this theme because I really think it does suit this theme well. Uh, anyway, let's just keep cruising around because we're almost done with our fly-through. So yeah, like I said at the start of the video, a little bit more in-depth fly-through or fly around the course. There's Clubhouse. We will get to that. So we got a T down here. Here's one of the island T's again, which is very nicely done. Oh, what's that? Oh, we got a little squirrel right there. All right, we got a squirrel on the course. He's a long way from home. We'll just wander all the way down through here. But yeah, absolutely magnificent looking course. And well, fantasy course, desert theme, I'm there. I am there. I'm a big fantasy fan. And well, desert is one of my favorite themes. Yeah, very nice looking course. Now, if I can just bring the camera up a little bit more. So we do have a tee box here which you do fire across to the island fairway. Here it is here. It is very nicely done. And then you just hop across to another island green. And again, that, that is cool when that um grandstand up there is packed out. I wonder what it would have looked like if Baby Bull had to put like floating rocks under the grandstand like it's been ripped up out of the ground or something like that yeah, just a thought anyway we got another island t here i'm pretty sure this is the 17th we'll just speed this camera up a little bit more we'll just quickly wander down through here we'll just cut over the top of this and we'll just check out all these nice rock work and planting got a beautiful assortment of colors as well very nicely done and this is where we hit the 18th, right here, firing back towards this almighty clubhouse with his artwork. And there's my yacht, that's what I came in on. He picked me up personally, come all the way over to Oz, grab me, bring me around on this one. <laughs> yes, I have quite an imagination, don't I? And as you can see, the grandstands are starting to fill up on this 18th hole which is absolutely stunning. Now, if we just pull up, we'll just have a quick little look around the clubhouse here. So you got the four pieces of artwork, which are very nice, the three down there, one big one in the middle. And if we zoom just around here, there is his, how does he word it? Um, Vanicopter, right there in the distance. Yeah, very nicely done. Yeah, there it is. Parodia Magnifica. Absolutely outstanding desert-themed fantasy course. 
All right, now we've done the fly through. So let's get into my four holes that I've chosen to showcase for this course. And there might be some bloopers because hell, we all know that I can't, or that I tend to have a shitty swing every now and then. So we may even chuck them in there for a bit of fun as well. Anyway, let's get into these four holes. Okay, so here we have hole one, and this is like the first hole of the course. Now this is a par four that's playing 441 yards with five feet down to the pin. Now the reason I chose this one is because like, I was just like wowed by this whole theme and just setting as soon as I walked out of the course with the whole floating grandstands and everything like that. But got a nice perfect off that off that um tee. Just put the ball in the center of the fairway. And this second shot, would we would I come in with this in here? I think. What do we have? 137 yards, 21 feet up. So we pulled out the 9-iron here and just absolutely launched this thing straight up to the green. And oh wow, I got a hold of it beautifully too. And wait till you see where this thing landed. I thought it was going in the hole. It was just like, wow, here it goes. I was like, come on, come on. And it just stopped short. But oh, such a good shot into that green. And we tucked it away for a nice little birdie on that first hole. All right, so jumping on to the next hole, we have the uh, fourth hole, which is a nice little par three, which was the old crackaroo hole. Yeah, we had to show this one off. Couldn't go past it. <laughs> Thanks, baby bull, for chucking the old kangaroo in there for me. Yeah, it was a nice little par three, 188 yards, 23 feet down. So we ripped out the old five iron into this. Got a hold of it a little more than what I'd like, so it rolled out a little bit more. Left me with, yeah, a little bit of a putt. So, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, we just um, lined this one up quite nicely, and pretty sure we sunk this one for a nice little bird, too. It had a bit of a break to it, but yeah, wow, it, I still couldn't get over this course. Nice sort of desert themed course. And there she goes for a nice little bird. Fist pump, yeah, right on. So we're currently three under after four there. And here, jumping onto the 16th hole. Now, this is the uh, par four with the island fairway. So, yeah, by this time, I was 10 under. I'll show you the scorecard at the end as well for anyone that might be interested. So, we had a slight little three mile breeze going with us. It was 336 yards with 12 feet down to the pin. Looking at it with the driver, I thought, oh, I could reach that. But if the wind was in our face, there's no way I would have went with this. There's no way I would have went for it. And, man, I was praying for a perfect when I hit it, which we did get. But, yeah, I love the whole grandstands with the, with the um, crowds just above you and everything. I thought it was really nice. But, yeah, we got 314 out of that one, which left us 23 yards with three feet up to the pin. Coming in with the old lob wedge pitch, just pulling a little bit of power out of this. Didn't want to hit it too far. It's going to put a little bit of natural backspin on it as well with the way the ball's lying or the angle of the lie. So yeah, it just came up right up close to the hole and I was like, oh yeah, that's a nice shot. Another nice one. So we popped that one in for a nice little bird as well. Now I didn't have any sort of blooper shots on this course, so there won't be any this time. But yeah, if we do get any in the future, well, I'll be throwing them in for sure. Give you a good old laugh. But anyway, this is the last hole that I chose to showcase, and this was the 18th, playing back towards the clubhouse. Nice big par 5, playing four, uh, 554 yards. And yeah, we got a hold of it nicely. I was swinging, I was swinging well today, or well, when I played this round, sorry, I shouldn't say today. Yeah, we got 308 yards, or three, sorry, 309 yards out of that one. So we got 246 coming in, one foot down, three miles coming at us. I sort of... Weighing up my options here. Do I play high? Do I play low? I thought I'd go low. But I ended up pretty much ripping a massive fast into this. Yep, there it is. The old red fast, which sent me way left. And it gave me a nasty little kick to the right here. And, yeah, put me in the shaggy carpet. So we had a nice little chip over this um little planted area. The rock there. No, sorry, not a chip. It was a pitch, actually. Uh, what do we have? 30... One yards with one foot down to the pin. So again, got a hold of my pitch shot a little more than what I like. Added a little fast in there as well to the swing. And we'll line up for the bird here. And it was a slight little downhill, little left to right break, nice little tap in. 
Yeah, what a, what a nice way to finish 18 holes. But I missed it. I <laughs> couldn't believe it. It didn't break. It didn't break. So we ended up getting a par on this hole. Oh, I could not believe that when it didn't break. I was like, where's the fucking break? But anyway, that was our four holes for Parodia Magnifica. And here's the scorecard. So yeah, we had a pretty good day. A lot of birdies out there. What did we score? Six under on the front nine and six under on the back nine. Which left us with a nice 12 under. So moving on to the next course. Okay, here we have our second course for today. And this one is the Nebuchadnezzar. And this one is designed by Sir La Rossi. Now this thing is an absolute work of art. This man's imagination is like on a whole new level. Absolutely outstanding. As you can see from the where the crowd grandstands are, it looks absolutely amazing. You can imagine just playing this course and you've got the crowds just cheering you on. But that was the first hole just down there. Now let's just pan around slowly. Just take in all these shapes that Sir La Rossi has gone for. And the camera angles, that was another thing that really caught my eye with this course. When the camera angle sort of goes to that um, sort of a little cinematic or, or view on the tee, it's got some absolutely stunning angles with this course. Uh, I don't know if it was intended or just purely accidental, but it works absolutely beautifully. If I could just pull the camera up a little bit higher for you all. You can just see these tea boxes, just all the shapes and everything the designer has gone for. This would have, this must have taken ages. Must have taken ages. You've got the tea boxes up here on the building. There's a ladder there to climb up or a little lift to get you up here. I remember this hole playing down through here. This was awesome. And you've got this monorail system that just winds its way all through the course. Down and around and everything like that. So let's just duck in under this monorail, which is like shipping containers. All right, now it does say here in Sir La Rossi's description, not much is known about the world of Nebuchadnezzar. The golf course, like the world, is somewhat different from the well-known golf courses in the normal world. So yeah, this is a this is a nice par five. This one down through here. You got so you got the all these different options coming in, and when these grandstands are packed down there, that is insane. And you got like this nice little lift that um Sir La Rossi has designed here, which will bring you up. I'm pretty sure is there a tea box up here? Yes, there is. See, there's a, there's a tea box just over here. He, he's thought of everything. You got the stairs that bring you around, or hell, you can catch a helicopter that brings you around to the tea boxes. You got water up on top of the buildings. There's that monorail system again that goes all the way around this course. I I could not believe this course when I seen it. It was just absolutely outstanding standing looking so we just wander down through this way now it also says here in addition to the cube like looking terrain the course adapts to the circumstances and is also very angular and different to others you're telling me it's different man this is very different in a nice way yeah i don't know what he's going for but it looks absolutely insane absolutely crazy we've got a nice little waterfall feature just coming out there from under the building come down around here i don't know what these things are but hell they look cool a nice little green up on top here as well yeah absolutely outstanding looking course if we just zoom up a little bit further i actually love all these straight edges or like these um uh i've lost the name for it i'm just in awe over this golf course absolutely insane i can't believe this thing i cannot believe it yeah there's the monorail system again it's cruising around you got in the way he's made the pylons to support that monorail system is very very nicely done i'll we'll just swing the camera around here so again there's the green there's some more grandstands imagine that packed out you got a green rod on the edge of here Absolutely crazy. 
nice little tee boxes just down to our left here. Then you got the stairs going down, or some sort of a ladder system. Must have long legs for that one, I tell you. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, very nicely done. Let's rip the camera up a bit higher and just fly down and around through here. All right, let's cut down through this way because we got this off this tee. You got these just this nice little water feature. But they're just coming out the sort of like the pipes out of the sides of the buildings. Which looks absolutely awesome from the tee and like the whole water area on this course. This is insane. This is this is crazy. This is crazy, I'm telling you man. This is absolutely crazy. So hopefully you all enjoy this new type of like show call um oh, double feature course showcase. I'm, I'm enjoying trying to do it, but it does take a lot of work. But yeah, all the feedback is really appreciated. Yeah, the grandstand work there. Now, if we rip the camera up, up over here in the distance, there it is. See, Nebuchadnezzar. How cool does that look? All right, now I'm just going to pull this camera back and up a bit further because you've got to have a look at this thing from the sky. It almost looks like some computer chip or something like that some sort of motherboard but there it is the nebuchadnezzar absolutely outstanding anyway i think that'll do for our little fly through but you get the gist of it we've seen a lot of detail the monorail system all these shapes all these funky little designs that sir la rossi has thrown down in there Man, hands down, these two designers are in my top three for fantasy courses. If I'm looking for a fantasy course, I look up Sir La Rossi and Baby Bull. And there is another one, but we'll leave that for another day. We'll leave you sweating on that, eh? Yeah, absolutely outstanding. But anyway, let's get into my four holes that I've chosen to showcase for this course. And hopefully you all enjoy it. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are on the third tee. Thought I'd start off with this hole because I, oh, I really like this one. This was a beautiful little par four. We had 336 yards. We're 52 feet down. The nine miles going with us. Now I thought to myself here, oh, this might be a drivable par four here. I do have a shorter driver, but we just absolutely ripped into it. And I'm thinking to myself, if we fall short, it's going to be in the bunker, or we're going to get a nice little bounce, and hopefully we can skip over that bunker. But man, we found the green on the full, so that was pretty cool. And a slight little break around to the left there which uh, brought us in nicely yeah left us with a little bit of putt we got four, 442 yards out of that drive which wasn't too bad i do love a good drivable par four so this was for an eagle here lining this one up had a little slight left to right break to it little 19 foot putt three inches up to the pin yeah we sort of just just got a nice little tap on it and it rolled away for a nice little eagle here. That's when I do eventually hit it, that is. There we go. So yeah, put a bit of weight onto it too. There it is, fist pump, nice eagle. So we're currently three under after the third hole there. So yeah, moving on to the next one. Oh no, there it is. Can't go anywhere. We all know what that is. <laughs> so this was the 13th hole, nice par four. Uh, 401 yards with five feet down to the pin. Had a few options here, I like this. I really enjoyed this um, par four. Could have played short there over to the right, just sort of laid up a little bit. But I thought, oh, let's play over here to the left. We had eight miles pushing us to the right. Now, I was thinking, can I bounce it off the buildings or something like that? But I ended up ripping it slow. So with that slow and that wind, it actually brought it around quite nicely. And we pretty much made the center of the fairway. It was quite narrow over here too. But I thought, oh, wow, if I wonder if I could bounce it off a building or something and just get a little bit further. But... Uh, didn't quite work out. Yeah, left us um, a nice little, what, 116 yards with 12 feet up to the pin. We had eight miles going with us on this one. So I was sort of weighing up my options with the clubs. Pulled out the old sand wedge for this. And just chucked a little bit of low loft on it. A little bit of backspin. Just wanted to make sure it did get up there. But yeah, the backspin just to sort of slow it down a little as well. And I managed just to stop on a dime, this one. Right there. So yeah, and again, slight little um, right to left break, slight little uphill, 
Imagine that and tap this one in for a nice little bird and keep on moving. But well, I tell you what, I really enjoyed this course. So we're seven under after the 13th there. Yeah, and moving here we have, uh, what do we got? The 14th hole, nice little par three. This was a beautiful little par three. You had those water features there coming out of the pipe work, which I thought was an absolute brilliant little touch. You got the grandstand over to the left as well that looks like it's being built into the buildings and it was... Yeah, it's like a little elevated um, green, like a almost like a blind shot into the green. can't remember if you could actually just see the flag from where we were, but we had the pitching wedge in the hand. It was 114 yards, what, 10 feet up. We got that wind coming out of us, so I pretty much just smashed the old pitching wedge straight in. We are hoping the wind's going to hold us up nicely. And it did too, because look at that. It just, again, just stopped on dying, parked itself right next to the hole. That was a great camera angle there. I really enjoyed that camera angle. I thought, wow, that's a nice little shot. Again, this whole course was beautiful. You had the monorail, everything. It was so unique. Such a unique course. Couldn't believe it. So you're eight under um, after 14 there. Anyway, moving on to hole 18. And that camera angle back there, that's what I was talking about earlier in the fly-through. Um, this course has had so many unique camera angles when you're standing on the tee. Yeah, this was a nice uh, 545 yard par five. Got a hold of it nicely. Slight little fast into it though, but did manage to find the fairway. A little bit of a kick to the left. So we ended up, what did we get out of that? 330 yards, which I was quite happy with. So that left us with 219 yards, what, one foot up to the pin. Now I was like, oh, I was looking here, I'm thinking to myself, well, well three hybrid, that's going to come in like a duck shot in the arse, so... Ended up pulling back to the three iron and just trying to compensate for the wind here. Now I did know that um, you, you could well you could tell when the ball hits the um, fairway here if we're going to fall short. It's going to kick to the left a little. I was kind of counting on that just to try and push me away from that bunker a bit as well in case I did fall short like I did. So yeah, we didn't actually make the green on that one. That left us with a nice little lob wedge chip, a little ten yard lob wedge chip. And there was no break where this ball was going to land. So I was pretty confident that I was going to get this one if I could nail the perfect. And I'm pretty sure that's what I did here. Nailed the perfect and managed to knock it down for an eagle. So that was a good way to finish um, 18 holes on that course. And like I said, that was a brilliant course. Absolutely brilliant course. So unique. But anyway, we'll pop on over the scorecard so you can check it all out. There we go, 11 under for the round. So what do we get? Uh, 5 under on the front 9, 6 under on the back 9, equaling 11 under. So there you have it. That's our double feature course showcase. Hopefully everyone enjoyed that one. I did really enjoy making it. It does take a lot more work, but hell, let us know what you think in the comment section below. We did take down a little bit of the playtime. Uh, we got to show off two courses, so it's a win-win. Shorter video, two courses. Can't argue with that. Anyway, I'm out of here all, so hopefully you all do enjoy it, and yeah, I'll catch you again next time. Later.